<coughs> so what is accounting? We're going to learn various types of fundamentals as it relates to accounting. We're going to talk about the definition of accounting, what it means for a company to have a certain financial position. We're going to talk about something called the accounting equation and the financial statements. What are the basic financial statements we often see in businesses? And generally accepted accounting principles. We're going to discuss a couple of them. There are things in this chapter we're not going to talk about because you're going to get it in a future chapter or another class. So if I don't talk about it in here, you don't need to know about it. Okay? Um, after that, we're going to talk about why we need accounting information, who uses it, what type of users are they, and we will always, in every business class you have, you're going to hear about ethics. Why do we talk about ethics so much? Anyone have an idea? Do you know what ethics is? Guidelines. I like to say doing the right thing, but what's the right thing? And ethics can change over time, can't they? I mean, back in the 60s, or actually 100 years ago, slavery was acceptable. Today, would that ever be acceptable? Not in the true American culture, would it? Although my daughter, who is um, a big international, um, you know, she focuses on um, third world countries. She says, Mom, there's slavery everywhere. There's even slavery in the United States. But it's undercover. But it's definitely not acceptable. So we're going to talk about these various items um, today. Some things I'm going to really focus on. Other things I'm going to skip over. And I will let you know, don't worry about this for a quiz. Or I'll tell you, this is really important. So accounting measurement, what's it mean? Well, we've got to find ways of measuring various types of activities. And so accounting is our way in which we provide information of measuring information, and we record this data that help people to make sense of it. So accounting measurement <clears throat> is the manner in which we measure this information, this data. The way we measure data is through something called business transactions. Business transactions, this is so important. Okay? Circle it. Economic events that affect a business's financial position. <clears throat> An economic event means it has to have some type of financial data associated with it. So a business transaction, such as me saying to Keith, Keith, I really want to do some business with you. Is that a business transaction? No. But if I said, Keith, here's $2,000, I want you to make this for me. Is that a business transaction? Yes, because we can measure it, can't we? So we're going to spend chapter one talking about what is a business transaction, what isn't, okay? Then we have something called money measure. <clears throat> money measure basically says in the United States, we don't really necessarily deal with other forms of currency. We deal with the dollar. And so we measure money in terms of a monetary value known as the dollar. As you get further and further along in accounting, <coughs> we will, various um, large companies have a lot of transfer pricing issues because they might ha transact business in um, on one end and then maybe sell it on another end. So we've got various types of unique um, comparisons when we're dealing with various monetary values. But for here, the dollar, the U.S. dollar is our monetary measurement, okay? We always record um, items in terms of money. <clears throat> Another item that's really important when we're dealing with the county is talking about a separate entity. Separate entities mean that each business is separate 
from another business or from its owners. So I have a company called Nancy Shoemake CPA PA. Shoemake CPA is separate from Nancy Shoemake and my husband. Okay, so events that happen with Jim and Nancy do not get recorded in Shoemake CPA. Also, events that happen in Shoemake CPA are separate from Nancy, the individual. Make sense? So each entity acts separately on its own. <coughs> now, <coughs> to give you just a little bit of insight, without going too complicated, there are a lot of big companies out there too. So let's just think of um, British Petroleum. No, that's not a good one. My husband avoids BP at all costs. There, that will be the only gas station. He's like, no, we're going to go off another thing and find another one. Let's think of, um, help me, help me, large company. What? I need something big. Best Buy, I don't think, really has a lot of... Um, Walmart! Walmart. <coughs> so Walmart is a big company. Walmart has a lot of subsidiaries, too. Is Walmart a separate entity without its subsidiaries? So do you see on the same hand that Shoemake CPA is separate from Jim and Nancy? Walmart and everything that makes up that company need to be treated as an entity in itself, okay? Because in respects, if it's operating as Walmart, but if these subsidiaries are 100% owned, it may need to put its entire structure in the accounting records so it's really accurately reflecting what happens. So on one end, Shoemake needs to be separate from Jim and Nancy, but then on the other end, a Walmart that stands on its own but still owns 20 other subsidiaries 100% really technically is a whole entity in itself. Make sense? Kind of what I'm telling you? Okay. <coughs> How about let me pause on that one because maybe I got ahead of myself and we'll go in, in, in a little bit longer, okay? Sorry about that. We'll, we'll talk about it a little more. Assets. Assets are things that we call economic resources that will provide a future benefit. Now, a future benefit means it's not something that's going to get just used up this year. It's going to be a resource that you're going to have for future years. An example, this building, this is an economic resource. Is it just going to be good for this year? Or do you think this is going to last us for a couple of years? A couple of years, that's an asset. An asset is an economic resource that will have a future benefit for several years. This paper. This is going to get used up right away. This isn't an asset, but this screen is an asset. This is an economic resource This is that's going to provide us a benefit in the future. It's, we're using it today, but we're also going to get to use it down the road. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So assets generally have a life longer than a year. Make sense? <coughs> Your automobile. Are you going to throw it away after a year? Is it worth something if you do sell it, though? Right. It's an economic resource. It's going to last you longer than this year. A plastic bottle. This is just something that is going to satisfy today and be done with. Okay? So assets are economic resources. This is the key that will have a future benefit. <clears throat> Next, we have something called liabilities. Liabilities are obligations or sacrifices a company has that obligations to pay cash or sacrifices to pay cash, transfer assets, 
or provide services to other entities in the future. Okay? So let's just say <coughs> Keith wants to start a business and he goes to the bank and takes out $100,000. That is going to be Keith's business's obligation or it's going to be a sacrifice because Keith needs to pay back that money in the future. See what I'm saying? So a liability is something that you're going to owe. It's an obligation that you're going to owe and it's going to continue in the future. Okay? Absolutely. We bought a home. This home should last us 50 years. With that home, we took out a loan on the home. The loan is 20 more years to go. Do you see? So oftentimes, unless you are just have some wealth, usually you need money. And if you don't have that money on you, you're going to have to take out a, li a liability to pay that back in the future. Make sense? Then we have something called owner's equity. <clears throat> owner's equity is going to be the residual. It's what's left over. So let's just say that this building, we're just going to take one item. This building is worth a million dollars. The workforce center has loans on it of 500000 The difference is going to be called owner's equity. Make sense? That's the equity. That's the worth they have in that particular asset or in a business. So I got ahead of myself, Cecile, and I will we'll, we'll talk about the separate entity as it comes up. <coughs> accounting. Accounting can be a manual system. Oftentimes now you're seeing a computerized system, don't you? So accounting is a system. We call it an information system because it's basically gaining information. It's gaining data along with monetary values. But this information measures, it's going to process, and it ultimately communicates to users information about a business. So let's think about it. Accounting being an information system, it measures. We measure it by determining, hey, this bill is $220. So we can measure something based on U.S. dollar. We process it determining what do we need to do with this particular transaction. Is it an asset? Is it an expense? How do we record it? And ultimately, the manner in which we record it will then also, in the financial statements, statements reveal to users who need it the goings on, the results of operations of a company. Am I? Are you with me so far? Making sense? <coughs> An economic entity is a unit that exists independently, such as a business, a hospital, or a government body. So an economic entity stands on its own. An economic entity may be the Starbucks off of County Road 5 and 42. An economic entity may be all the Starbucks combined, OK? <coughs> But an economic entity won't be Starbucks and Caribou and what's another one? Einstein's all put together. Those are three separate entities, aren't they? Do you see what I'm saying? Each entity is reported on its own. <coughs> Best Buy and sorry, I gotta drink something, huh? I'm trying to think of a Best Buy equal cohort. Um how about Walmart is separate from Target, isn't it? Target reports its profits and its financial position separate. Walmart also 
provides its information separate. Um, so the importance in accounting is that each entity stands on its own. You don't combine Keith and Fred's financial information together, right? Because they're separate individuals. Or if Fred has a business and Keith has a business, for the most part, you're going to keep those separate unless there's a reason they need to be connected because one so much influences another position, okay? But know this right now <clears throat> that every business is on its own. Here's another example. My husband's a photographer. He has something called Nelson James Photography. The transactions that happen in his business are totally separate from Shoemake CPA. Make sense? Because Shoemake prepares taxes, has different transactions, brings in money, pays out expenses, totally for the purpose of Shoemake CPA. Even though Jim and I are married, <coughs> his transactions related to Nelson James Photography are totally separate from Shoemake or from Jim and I. Okay? Make sense? Because it's a separate entity. Got it? Next. <clears throat> Accounting is a link between business activities and decision makers. Hmm, what does that mean? Well, think about it. There's a business activity. Keith, what kind of business are you getting into or you have? I have a scrap metal company. A what? A scrap metal company. Okay, so do you basically receive scrap metal and then you process it or sell it? I sell it. Okay. Got So basically, let's think of Keith's business, okay? Keith's business probably has costs to go out and purchase people's scrap metal, okay? And then he might have some costs to have labor or trucks or storage or who knows what equipment to gather this and store it. <clears throat> and then this scrap metal company is going to have income from selling the, the metal. Okay? Those various business activities are all a part of the scrap metal company. He may own a storage facility, he may rent a storage facility, but whatever it is, it's all under this key scrap metal. So with this business, there's all this information that's happening. <clears throat> there's truck payments. There's maybe loan payments. There may be um, checks written out to go purchase everyone's scrap metal. There may be payroll. There are going to be revenues or money coming in from selling the scrap metal to the various um, Ford company or whoever buys the stuff. So all of this information related to key scrap metal is data. This data, the way we accountants do it, is we take this data, we're going to process it, and we're going to sit here and go, okay, Keith wrote a check to Grace for $402. $402, that's a measurement. That's how much the transaction has a, is um the measure of that check. But what's that check for? So we're going to have to process, what is this? Is this a salary? Is this purchasing inventory? See what I'm trying to do? We're going to have to measure what happened here. Then, as we go through all Keith's data, we're going to measure it, we're going to process it, and ultimately we're going to put it in a format that we get to communicate to maybe a banker Keith wants to borrow money from, <clears throat> or maybe another investor that he wants someone to invest in the business with. We're going to communicate to some type of user all the activities that have happened in Keith's business. Does that make sense? This is how we classify accounting as an information system because it's going to compile the information, go through it, hash it out, and relay it back. Make sense? <coughs> now, 
I'm only going to touch on this. In accounting, we have two branches of accounting. One is called financial, one is called managerial. I'm going to keep it so simple for you. You might see this again, but it's this simple. Financial accounting relates to the external users to evaluate how a business has achieved its goals. So financial accounting is us communicating information about key scrap metal to banks, to maybe investors, to maybe the city because he wants to take out permits. I mean, I'm just playing with information. But it's outside the company. He's trying to portray a picture of his company to outsiders. Okay? That's financial accounting. When we use accounting to convey information to external users outside of the company. Manager, well, managerial, okay, these reports are called, okay. So, these financial external users <coughs> need information. Are we going to just hand them a bunch of his checks and deposits? Hell no. We're going to provide these statements that are real organized so they can get an overview and go, oh, I see how much money he's brought in. Oh, I see his expenses and his net income. Okay? Or he's, we're going to provide a statement that says, oh, these are his assets. Hmm, I see he's got some trucks. Oh, he's got a building. Oh, he must have some, um, some patents. He, you know, something's going on here that he's got some unique patents related to his metal. And then he'll, we'll also see what kind of loans he has outstanding. So we provide this information in a really creative, concise manner, <clears throat> and we call those financial statements. <clears throat> so these financial statements are what we are going to issue to these external users to share information about Keith's metal business. Financial statements report on the business's financial performance. Make sense? Kind of? Are you following me so far? <clears throat> now, there's something else, but we're not going to talk about it much in this class. There's something else called managerial accounting. Managerial accounting is information we provide to what we call internal users. Okay? Internal users still need financial statements. But they're going to be totally different than what external users are going to use. So, for example, in Keith's sheet metal business, sorry, I'm losing my voice. Can you believe I haven't talked this long in about five weeks? <coughs> um, Keith's sheet metal business will show the big picture to external users. But Keith's project manager might want to see real detailed information like, I want to see in the past month how many hours my staff worked and specifically what areas they put their energies into. That's still financial information, but it's a lot more detailed. Do you and I care about that stuff about Keith's business? No, but he does. And the people inside his company do to make it more productive and profitable. Make sense? So. I said all that to say financial accounting deals with external users, managerial accounting deals with internal users, and they usually need different types of information. Make sense? So, Best Buy. Best Buy in managerial accounting is going to break apart various types of products and see what their gross margins on are on each one and maybe related to warranty work for specific types of product lines. You see the detail? Because they might want to get rid of some products that aren't performing well or not making them money. If we want to invest money into Best Buy stock, do we care about a specific TV? Heck no. We just want to see the big numbers. Okay? Got it? Have I beat that one up? Okay. <clears throat> so, we're not going to worry about bookkeeping or management services. 
so you saw when I just skipped over something, you can skip over it too. Now, accounting measurements. To deal with an accounting measurement, we're going to talk about and we're going to ask ourselves some questions. What's being measured? When should we measure it? What value should we place on it? And how should we classify it? Okay, so accounting measurement is what, when, what value, and the classification. We do all that as it relates to these business transactions, these economic events. An economic event will affect and change the financial position of a company. If it doesn't change the financial condition of a company, then it's not an economic event. Keith going to me, and he comes and looks at my scrap metal, and he says, hmm, maybe next year I'll take this. Was that an economic event? No. Did he even give me some money to secure it or we write anything down? No. What if Keith said, okay, Nancy, I'm expecting you to have 500 pounds of sheet metal or 5,000 pounds of sheet metal. Right now you only have 1,000. I'm going to make a contract with you that says um, in 12 months from now, I'm going to purchase your sheet metal. Here's $500 up front to, to reserve it. Is that an economic event? Yes, because the transaction was affected. Okay? Transactions can be exchanges of value, which means it can be a purchase, a sale, a payment, a collection, or a loan between two or more parties. So it just doesn't have to be a purchase or a sell. It can be paying on a loan. Okay? Money gets exchanged. It affects the financial condition. Transactions can be economic events that does not exchange, um, involve an exchange. Some of these, like fires, Hurricanes that cause damage, theft, physical wear and tear on machinery and equipment, and the accumulation of interest. So it's still an economic transaction because when someone took out a loan five years ago at a 5% interest rate, until that loan gets paid back, there's a continual interest that's going to accrue each month. Does that make sense? Or this projector, it's going to last us several years. But the more I keep doing this, I'm wearing it down. Even if I didn't yank on it, it's going to just get worn out through the passage of time. And so we've got to find a way, which we'll talk about in the future, in a little bit. Uh, how do we take care of this asset and write off a chunk of it each year that it's getting worn out? Make sense? Or this building. <coughs> this building looks kind of new in here, but I'll guarantee you, after five or six or ten more years of being in here, it's going to look kind of trashy, isn't it? They might have to replace the various types of utilities. So how do we account for this building over the passage of time? So that's something accounting does. We call it depreciation when we take an asset and we show some use over the period of time. So transactions are economic events, <coughs> but they don't always have to involve an exchange between one and another. Okay? So no... <clears throat> so I'm so sorry, guys. Um, transactions can be economic events, but it doesn't always have to involve an exchange between two people. A fire came, destroyed my house. Did Kevin do it or did Keith do it? It just happened. Or lightning struck and destroyed a computer in Keith's business. Did someone cause it to happen? It was an economic event, but it doesn't always have to be between two people. Make sense? <coughs> um, 
<clears throat> to be recorded, a transaction must relate directly to a business entity. So can I write off Jim's cameras on Shoemake CPA? No. Does, do Jim's cameras have anything to do with Shoemake CPA? No. But can I write off my server, my software, my computers, my rent on Shoemake CPA? Yes, because it has everything to do with why I'm in business. So events or transactions related to my business affect me. Transactions related to Keith's business will affect Keith's business. They all remain separated. I'm going to take a break a minute. Are you guys cool with that? <laughs>